Many entrepreneurs make the mistake of thinking that if they build a following on social media, that selling will become easy and effortless. Unfortunately, that is rarely the case. So today we're talking about four reasons your videos might not actually be selling your offers. Let's get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Liz and I help coaches and consultants add video to their business. Be sure to subscribe so that you never miss my content, which I release every Tuesday. Now, the reason that I'm making this video is because I get frustrated when people think that having a large following on Instagram or on TikTok or wherever is automatically going to allow them to sell more. Yes, we absolutely need an audience so that we have somebody to sell something to. But there are so many instances of people who have large followings who tried to sell 20 t-shirts and couldn't actually get that done. The stories about this are endless. So in fact, if you are slowly building a following, even if it's 300 people or 1,000 people or 30,000 people, there's a certain number of them who should be willing to purchase something every time you let them know that there is something for sale or that you have an offer. That is the whole point of having this large following if you're using video for your business. So if you feel like you are putting out your videos and you're building your following, but every time you launch your course or release something new that nobody is biting, then it could be that you're making one of these four mistakes. So let's jump right into it. Now, the first mistake is that your story might be all over the place. We're talking about your brand story. It's not enough to simply show up on social media on video or to show up on video in general and just talk about different topics that you think that your audience enjoys. Don't forget that in today's day and age, people also want to feel like you are a relatable person. You actually matter in this equation and we're going to talk more about that later in this video. But if your brand story does not actually paint a picture to your viewer of your past life, where you came from, how you struggled with this same problem, how you came to some bigger conclusions and your aha moments, the steps that you took towards the transformation, then a real important part of your story is missing. So your brand story might have a lot of gaps like this. You need to also include a little bit about your personal life, a little bit about your quirks, your eccentricities. These are all things that people want to see because it humanizes you. It allows your viewer to feel like not only do you know this topic really well, but you're a normal everyday person just like them. Those are the type of people that your audience actually wants to work with. Now, I made a video recently about how to humanize your brand, so be sure to go and watch that one because that will help you to find ways to make that personal connection so that your brand story has a real vibe around it. When somebody thinks about your brand, five or six things should come to them all the time. Now, we're not talking about things like whether you always have a green coffee cup or whether you always have a green wall behind you. We're talking about five big brand pillars that your audience should immediately recognize about you and your story. So this means you need to sit down and take some time to build that brand story and make it crystal clear for your audience who you are, what you're about, why you're selling this thing, and how that thing is actually going to help them with your help. Now, the second reason that your videos might not be bringing in the sales is because your actual point might not be hitting home. It may be that your audience is not totally clear on how the thing that you have is going to change their life. You would be surprised because those of us who are coaches and consultants, we are crystal clear on how transformational our offer might be. We've probably gone through this journey ourselves, and we know that the end result is going to be life-changing and absolutely catapult your ideal client into the desired state. But they might not know that. It might not have been spelled out as clearly and as easily as possible. This often happens if we use a lot of industry jargon or if we use generic jargon. You know how everyone nowadays shows up and says the word value? There's nothing wrong with that word, but everyone is saying that and it doesn't actually connect back to what it is that you do. So don't make your audience do mental math. Don't make them have to dig through all of your content to figure out exactly how your thing is going to help them. So this means when you're creating the videos, you need to include that level of storytelling where you describe their present state and that future state that they could have what they are going to lose in their life if they don't work towards that, how you are the right person to get them there, and the cost of not taking that leap. 
These are all the things that should become clear to them. Along with that is how you are talking about how your offer is so perfectly created to align with all of those different areas that they need to cover. So this will really help your viewer to see that your videos are the ones that are helping them to fill in these little gaps and they are now understanding where the problem areas are and how you help them. Now we're interrupting this video so that I can remind you to subscribe. I think you should do that first. And if you want to get started with video sooner rather than later, be sure to look for the free resource in the description below. Just click on the link and I will send that off to you. Now let's get back to our video. The third reason that your videos might not be bringing in enough sales is because you are not positioning yourself as an authority figure when you show up on video. Remember that the viewer who is watching that does not want to do business with someone who's at the same level as them. So you might absolutely be the expert. You've gone through the journey and the transformation yourself and you are operating from a place of authority. But if you don't actually speak like that and show up like that and bring in deeper content, we're not talking about basic level stuff that they can find all over the internet, deeper content that shows that you really, really are an authority in your area, then it's not going to be clear to them. I remember recently I bumped into this woman on Instagram and I think her name is Phoebe Kuhn. She has an Australian accent, but I just very randomly saw a reel of hers where she was talking for a couple of minutes and I was stunned and blown away by the authority that she had when she was speaking. Forget about the fact that she's got a lot of followers. Forget all of that. I am 100% sure that even when she had 100 followers, she was probably showing up like that. Within seconds, I felt like there is nobody on the planet who probably knows this topic in depth as much as her. She wasn't sitting with the surface level content. She was diving deep into it, which made it clear to me that she has read books on this topic. She has done work on this topic. She has written articles on this topic and she has spent time to understand how it impacts her viewer. So this is what I mean about showing up as an authority figure. It has nothing to do with talking with an aggressive voice or any of that stuff. It just has to do with your viewer being clear that you've done a lot of work and a lot of research and a lot of thinking about this. Not that you've just scratched the surface the way that they might have. Now, in case you're a fan of the movie series Star Wars, then you'll remember the two characters, Yoda and Luke Skywalker. Now, was there ever any doubt in your mind as to who was the authority figure between the two of them? Yoda always showed up in a way that made it clear that he had experiences under his belt and now he was qualified to teach them. He was always coming from that angle. You would never ever felt like Yoda was on any type of journey himself, even though yes, you and me as coaches and consultants, we're always on a life journey. Just because we are now teaching this topic and we're an authority doesn't mean that we've reached the finish line. We are still learning a lot. However, the way that you are presenting yourself puts that person at ease. This is why Luke Skywalker felt comfortable that he was getting advice from the right person and that he was actually working with the person who was going to help him get this job done. On the other hand, would you ever have considered Luke an authority? He always seemed like he didn't know what he was doing and that he was on his journey. So this is what I mean about showing up in a way that is just yourself, but really positions yourself as somebody who has the experience and is now qualified to teach it. Now, the fourth one is the one that people rarely do. And then they come back and tell me, oh, Liz, I'm already doing this. And then I look at their content and they're not. And that is they forget to focus on themselves. They forget that the viewer needs to be invested in you as a person. Everyone wants to work with a coach or a consultant who they personally like. It doesn't mean that you have to be the same age as your audience or look like them or dress like them. None of that. But the way that you show up and your tone of voice, the words that you use, the way that you explain things, the type of different content pieces that you put out, all of that helps your audience understand you as a person. If you put your face regularly on stories, for example, that's when people feel like they're kind of seeing you multiple times in a day. Who else do they see multiple times in a day? Sometimes we don't see our own family members that often. So when you are constantly in and out of their world, you become that familiar face to them. You're no longer just a stranger who has the label of coach that is selling something. So they really need to buy into you, your personal story, 
some of your hobbies, the things you do on the weekend, all of that. Take them along with you for all of these experiences. Let them feel like you are someone that they could actually invite out to coffee and spend an hour talking about stuff with. Now remember, this is different from trying to be somebody who you are not. That's not what we're going for here. You are just trying to simply show yourself the way that you are so that you can attract people who say, yes, I get this girl, I like this, I like this person, and let me look deeper into working with them. Remember that if you're a coach, you might have to show up once a week or twice a week or privately on coaching calls with that person. Or if you're doing live coaching work, you might have to go meet your clients somewhere. Would anybody want to jump on a coaching call with someone that they don't feel a personal connection to? So this is what I'm talking about. Don't leave yourself out of the equation. It is great to put out content marketing that is really tuned in to the topics that you know your audience wants. But if you are a coach or a consultant or someone who is actively involved in the offer that you are promoting, then you also need to add yourself to that mix. It's not only about the pain points and the actual troubles and the transformation. It is also about you. So there could be a good chance that you have left your own personality out. Your audience might not actually have a clear idea of what it might be like to hang out with you for one hour. And that actually makes a difference. So if you like this video, I hope that you will give it a like, share it off with one of your friends. Don't forget to subscribe because every single Tuesday, I bring you a new video teaching you how you can use video for your business. So until next time, take care.